scripture reading will be coming from the book of Genesis, uh, the 37th chapter, reading verse 18 through 20. It reads this way, it says, They saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. They said to each other, Here comes that dreamer. Now is our chance. Let us kill him and throw him into these pits and say that a wild beast has devoured him. Then we shall see what will become of his dreams. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I will come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all glory, honor, and grace. For if you want to live, we move and we have our own. Without your love, we're not. But the scripture declares, through Christ, we're all more than conquerors. God, we thank you in advance for all the healings and all the battles and all the mountains that you already brought. Yes. If it wasn't for you who was on our side, oh Lord, where would you be? But thanks be unto God who always calls us to triumph. Lord, some of us are even winning with withered hands. Some of us are even winning, Lord, with withered bodies. Some of us are even winning, God. With things, God, that we are up against. Yes. But we thank you in advance, God, that we are still yet amongst the living. Yes. God, we give you glory tonight for that dream, oh God. Yes. We pray, God, that the dream will never die. Yes. The work that's already been done. Yes. We ask, God, that you would continue to work in us, oh God. That we may be able, God, to lift up your name in spite of any and everything that may come against us. Yes. God, we praise you. Yes. We praise you for our goings and we praise you for our comings. Yes. Now, God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch the hearts of those that are here tonight. Yes. That you would cause them, God, to, to look towards the hills which come in all of their help. We know all of our help coming from you, O oh God. We pray, God, that we believe in my faith. That this world, God, that you allowed us to take part in, God. That this world, God, that we're in, God, but not of, oh God. That this world, God, will be a better place when we leave, God, than it was before. God, we pray right now, God, for the leader of this church. Pray, God, that you will continue to build up, God, his heart, his countenance, oh God. Pray, God, not only for him, God, but for those other that are bereaved at this time, oh God. Yes. We don't know him all by name, oh God. But we do know, God, that you know, oh God. Yes. Yes. So, God, we ask in advance that you will let your glory come in this place tonight, God. God, we want you to get the glory out of everything that we do, God, tonight. We pray for the speaker, God, that you would give us words of wisdom and words of courage, God. Make it easy for God. We pray that best and give you glory. It's in your son and name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen and amen.
of one to the council. Office of the Mayor, City of Monticello, Proclamation, January 17th, 2022. To whom these present come, greetings. Whereas, January the 17th, 2020, marked the observation of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. federal holiday. And whereas Dr. King devoted his life to advance equality, social justice, opportunity for all, and challenge all Americans to participate in the never ending work of building a more perfect union. Whereas celebrating Dr. King's life and spirit through community, wide recognition and service of his holidays and appreciation of ways of honoring Dr. King, bringing our citizens together, strengthening our community and nation. Whereas it is appropriate for the city of Monticello, Arkansas, to support a community celebrating and observing of the holidays honoring Dr. King. And whereas in each of us can and must contribute to make our community better with increasing opportunities for all citizens. And when I say all citizens, mm -hmm. and whereas the city of Monticello urge all people yeah. to join and pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. King and apply his life teaching of service to inspire others to serve and remember his spirit of community. Community. And when you say community, it's not just saying Ward 1. Yeah. It's the, the community of Monticello, Drew County. Amen. Whereas, therefore, in the absence of Mayor Chase, I am here by virtue of this authority vested in me as in her honor of the mayor of Monticello, Arkansas, hereby I proclaim January the 17th, 2020, as Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And witness thereof, I set my hand. Thank you. Yeah. 
You know, seven years ago, I was in New York City. Well, I write that the first book that I had written. And while I'm sitting there writing books, a demented black woman came up. The only question I heard from her was, you, Martin Luther King, and I was looking down writing, and I said yes. The next minute I felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. I was rushed to Holland Hospital. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. That plane had gone through with x-rays revealed that the tip of the blade was on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. And once that's punctured, you drown in your own blood. That's the end of it. It came out in the New York Times the next morning that if I had merely sneezed, I would have died. Well, about four days later, they allowed me, after the operation, after my chest had been opened and the blade had been taken out, to move around in the wheelchair in the hospital. They allowed me to read some of the mail that came in from all over the states and the world. Kind letters came in. I read a few, but if one of them, I will never forget. I have received one from the president and the vice president. I've forgotten what those telegrams say. I received a visit and a letter from the governor of New York, but I've forgotten what that letter said. Yes. But there was another letter that came from a little girl, a young girl, who was a student at the White Plains High School. And I looked at that letter and I'll never forget it. Said simply, dear Dr. King, I am a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School. She said, while it should not matter, I would like to mention that I'm a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing you to say that I'm so happy that you didn't see. And I want to say tonight. I want to say tonight that I too am happy that I didn't see the that I had seen. I would have been around here in 1960. And students all over the South started sitting in the lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream, taking the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy, which were dug deep by the founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If I had seen, I would have been around here in 1961 when we decided to take a ride for freedom and end its segregation in interstate travel. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962. The Negroes in all of Georgia decided to straighten their backs up. And whenever men and women straighten their backs up, they are going somewhere because a man can't lodge your back unless it is there. If I had sneezed,
for allowing us to assemble. We thank you for allowing us to be able to give. These are all other blessings. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. In the house of Amen. Amen. Come on, let us stand as we get ready to come. Come on. We need you to give your best tonight. Help us to support this program for this cause. And don't they see me?
Good evening. Good evening. Our speaker for this evening, Chanel P.J. Yarbrough. Chanel is affectionately known as P.J., short for Precious Jewel. She is intentional about living life to its fullest and seeking opportunities to help others realize their potential and to excel. Her life is full of excitement. She fulfills many roles, including, but not limited to, wife, mother, pastor's wife, ordained minister, educator, life coach, author, and motivational speaker. PJ exhibits infectious enthusiasm and unrelenting sincerity. A graduate of Southern Arkansas University, Yarbrough has deep-rooted passion for children. She has dedicated over 20 years of her life working in several capacities in the education field. She is intentional about striving for effectiveness, empathy, and equality for all children and her colleagues. Currently, she is a training supervisor, or advisor rather, with the University of Arkansas Early Care and Education Projects. We're glad to have her here because she is a highly sought out speaker for Christian early childhood and civic events. You can go ahead and clap your hands like you did. Additionally, she contributes significantly to a variety of efforts that are dear to her heart. Yarbrough is also actively involved in her church, Changing Lives Ministries Church, where she has served alongside her husband, Pastor Larry B. Yarbrough Sr. for 16 years. Volunteer involvement includes past service as the Vice President of the Elder River School District and membership on multiple boards. Currently, she is a member of Forward Arkansas Board of Directors, the El Dorado Service League. In January 2022, she began her service as the newly elected Arkansas Early Childhood Association President. She's a member of the Divine Nine. <laughs> a proud, pretty girl, a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She volunteers as a mentor for young girls and enjoys spending time with her family, reading, writing, and thrift shopping for vintage clothes. PJ and her husband of 21 years, Larry D. Singer, reside in El Dorado and are the blessed parents of two sons Larry D. Jr. and Lance. After the song by the choir, the next voice you will hear will be our speaker for the evening. Lady, Mrs. Chanel PJ, Precious Jewel, y'all.
so thankful for this opportunity. I want to just give honor to God for blessing us to be here. And I want to give honor to the Drew County in the LACP. 
properties of derivatives and essential functions. Tonight, mathematically speaking, our two variables in our equation are justice and equality. When added together, they produce a result or a solution, which is progress. We've come a long way, Lord, a mighty long way. Let's look at variable number one. First, we have justice. What is justice? Justice is rightfulness. It is moral rightness, especially tonight as we speak of racial justice. It is laws to firmly judge and punish crimes and criminals. While justice is still shy of what the authors of the Declaration of Independence intended, justice for all, it is far from what it was some 200 years ago. That's right, that's right. In August of 1955, Emmett Till was put in the back of a green pickup truck and lynched, shot, and thrown over a bridge with a fan of a cotton gin tied to his neck. One month later, in September of 1955, after only a five-day trial, an all-white, all-male jury, because women and blacks could not vote, were acquitted, found innocent, both found innocent in 67 minutes. One juror said, if it had not stopped for a coke break, it wouldn't have even taken that long. Not to mention that just a few days after, both of the men confessed, but they still were not charged. Let's fast forward 65 years later, two years ago in February of 2020. Ahmaud Arbery was jogging in his neighborhood when three men, two in a truck, got out and assaulted Arbery with a shotgun that shot him three times. He attempted to defend himself, but lost his life. In the November 2021 trial, the three men were found guilty. 23 out of 27 counts. One bystander said, it's not going to heal most of the wounds from a long history of inequality, but it's a start and shows that people are now trying. We're making progress. We've come a long way, Lord. A mighty long way. Many things are still not as we wish, but strides have been made since Dr. King's August 28, 1963 speech, I have a dream. This speech was on variable number two, equality. Equality is having equal status, equal rights, and equal opportunity. We come a long way from 1619 when slaves were brought into Jamestown, Virginia as cheap labor to work the land of white settlers. Now we own our own land. Our ancestors were denied their identity, their language, their culture, their humanity, and were even seen as less than humans. As time went on, the Jim Crow laws called segregation laws. Simple accommodations like restrooms and water fountains were marked black and white. Black sat on the back of buses and black children went to schools that had very little current curriculum. But now, we can use the restroom wherever we want to. We can drink from any fountain that we choose. Not only can we sit on the bus, we can own the fleet of buses. We no longer have to send our children to schools that do not have what the other schools have, but they have the opportunity in the best schools in the world. At that time, we entered establishments through back doors and were unable to sit inside the restaurants. Now, we have the keys to the building. We own multiple franchises. Equality is being achieved. We've come a long way, Lord. A mighty 
long way. As we think on the final portion of this thing's equation, there's no doubt that we are fortunate enough to say that the result is progress. What is progress? We are moving forward. We are in the process of improving and developing. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not implying by any means that we have arrived to the point that we want to be. But we have come this far by faith. And I don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us. As I was preparing for tonight, I thought about all the different people who would be in the room, and I thought about all of the different generations that would be represented, and I know that all of us have had different experiences. Regardless if we are white, black, Hispanic, Asian, young or old, we have suffered injustices. We have suffered inequality. But all I can talk about is my own circumstance. As I think about my grandmother, she was the daughter of a slave. She told me many stories, and we always knew she didn't get to attend school, and she never learned to read. That was the early 1900s. She could not go to school. She never learned to read. And so when I think about 96 years, after my grandmother was born, I was a senior in high school. My best friend, sitting right here on the front row, and I were seniors in high school, and there's no reason that 96 years after my grandmother had been born and could not go to school and never learn to read, that we had school officials who refused to give us scholarship information to go to college. 96 years, they failed to support us but we still made progress. Nearing the end of my college life, funding got really low. Can I get a witness? I was looking for avenues and ways to get my degree, and I wanted to do it the legal way. I ended up seeking out the Miss Southern Arkansas University of and when I went to this meeting to be a part of this pageant, I looked around and I was among people who didn't look like me. Yeah. I had never been in a pageant before, but they told me if I did okay, I might win a scholarship to stay in school. My it was my motivation. Yeah. So I went through this pageant and I became the first African American in 90 years to be Miss Southern Arkansas University.
working with a group of ladies from all over the state. And I thought they were my friends. And we worked so well, side by side. We were making progress. We were doing great things. And I received a call that said, PJ, we want you to lead the pack. And I was so excited. I told my husband, let me borrow some money. I want to take them all out to lunch. Mama. And I got my first paycheck as a supervisor. My God. He said, sure, that'll be nice. Take the whole team out to lunch. Lay out your plan. Tell them where you're headed this next couple of years as their supervisor. Yeah. We all meet downtown El Dorado. We order our food. I lay out my papers. I share her role and her role and her role and her role. And they hear me out and they're smiling. And about the time we were taking our napkins and wiping our mouths, one said, well, PJ, I'm going to retire. Oh. Well. The next one said, well, today is my last day. I'm resigning. The third one said, I've already applied for another job. Wow. And the fourth one said, I just don't think this is going to be a good fit. Oh, wow. I left that day realizing that this progress meant that sometimes I had to stand alone.
and take a few more steps down this pompous circumstance to progress. These steps, I'm just going to give you three. I can give you a lot. But the first one I'll tell you is know the intended outcome. Educate yourself on current topics and encourage people to think about the shared fair values. Encourage them to do some hopeful thinking. Don't be blinded by what things used to be and how they still are, but instead put your mind on the power of progress. Know the intended outcome. Number two, be a bridge, not a bypass.
and legacy one weekend of the year, but we celebrate his life and legacy every day when we address injustice, inequality, racism, and discrimination. Drew County Monticello must never become so relaxed and so politically correct that we cannot address what we see, what we hear, and what we know. If we do, we become traitors within our own society. We must recognize the struggles we face, but understand that struggles do not last always. When we are willing to become change agents, unify our efforts and recognize all unrighteousness is sin. As long as there are disproportionate numbers reported through data, collected in education, politics, economics, and social arenas, we can never stop watching, we can never stop having productive communication that brings about respect, honor, and recognition to all people. We are neighbors. All of us. Choosing your residential subdivision does not lessen your responsibility for your brothers and sisters everywhere, no matter the race, color, creed, nationality, or sex. Do me a favor tonight. Open your hearts and your minds and never apologize for who you are or the tribe you belong. Be you and be proud of being you. Walk no more in inferiority. Recognize that you have power and recognize that you have a voice. No one can speak for you better than you can speak for yourself. So I say speak. Finally, vote. Understand that if you want to see real change happen in our community, then you must practice what you preach. You must vote. You must do the things that you want other people to do for you. If they're not concerned about your community, then evaluate yourself and see if you are concerned. See if you have time. See if you're willing to sacrifice. The first responsibility, I believe, comes with our own accountability. So you must vote. You must encourage your household to vote. And you must encourage your neighbors to vote. Yes, our mission is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all citizens. And achieve equality of rights and eliminate racial prejudice among the citizens of the United States by removing all barriers of racial discrimination through democratic processes. Therefore, our vision is simple. It is to ensure a society in which all individuals have equal rights and there is no racial hatred or racial discrimination. We're going to keep on working. Because Drew County's vision is that we become bold, involved, and make sure that we are equal. Thank you for your participation tonight. And know that the Drew County NAACP Branch 6042 is open for all people yeah. to serve all people. Thank you. I would like to recognize tonight those who have uh, been sponsorships that I have at the moment. The treasurer can help me if I leave anyone out. But we do want to give a special shout out to Morningstar Baptist Church, Reverend Daryl Buffington, Lou Lambert and Divine Solutions, Shekinah Services, Holmes Chapel, Presbyterian Church, and Interim Pastor Dr. Goldman, Trinity Full Gospel Ministries and Apostle Lorenzo Simmons, The Great I Am Temple and Pastor Jerome Pace, Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor A.I. Brown, Holy Temple Church of God in Christ and Superintendent Rodney Henderson, 
Mr. Anthony Jackson, and of course, where we stand tonight, the Bible of the Church of God in Christ, and Bishop Michael Jones. without the help of those who are willing to serve and sacrifice their time, talent, and labor. So thank you to all of you who took part of this program, to our guests from our hometown, El Dorado, Arkansas, come on, give it up for Amen. To all of you, the NACP members and officers, I have something for you in just a minute. But I'd also like to take this time to recognize any city and state officials that may be in our audience tonight, would you please stand? Any city and state officials that are representing here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We also want those who are running for office, if you are here on tonight, we want you to stand at this time, and let us see. <laughs> Take the time to meet them as we are leaving to find out what they're running for office for. We would also like to give a special shout out to our school administrators in both Monticello and Drew Central Schools. She talked about making progress, and it was a vision of mine more than 20 years ago as I stood before the Monticello School Board and talked about observing Martin Luther King Day, uh, even either letting out of school or either placing activities in school that honored Dr. Martin Luther King. Well, the dream has been realized. Monticello School District opened their doors to us. Unfortunately, we were not able, due to COVID, but they have left their doors open for us to continue to work in the school system, to continue to build a bridge and to help with our school system, and they will be doing more work. Like, come on, let's give it up for Mama Sarah. Likewise, we can give it up for Drew Central School District. We are making progress. The doors are open, and now we must continue to walk through them. So we thank them for what they have done. I would like at this time for all of the MLK Celebration Committee workers to please stand. They are Bettina Randolph, Keith Wells, Brennan Robinson, Al Peer, Anthony Jackson, Angela Anderson, Deborah West, who is absent tonight, Special Sanders, LaBrittany Jones, she said, Constance Williams, who was called to work. Come on, let's give them a hand. I don't know if I'm into it by myself. They take no words to help me throughout this entire celebration. You may be seated. Next.
Ms. Peggy Orr is the chair of the Freedom Fund Committee and also uh, member at large. Let's give it up, Ms. Peggy, for Ms. Peggy Orr. While you're there, stay with her. Ms. Maddie Orr, who is a member at large. Give Ms. Maddie. Give Ms. Maddie a hand, her mama. I think her mama loves me. She dances with me in the park. Um, Ms. Stacy Smith, who is on our new works and the new chapter. A member at large. Thank you, Stacy. Pastor Jerome Pace who is the leader of our legal redress team. Let's call it up with my past. <laughs> Reverend Buffington, who chairs our political action committee. Come on, let's give it up for us. <laughs> Dr. Chris Allen, who is our economic uh, chairperson. He's already the best. Is what we call it. We're going to be running everything tonight with sound. Elena P., she is not here tonight. She is on our housing uh, committee. Kiana Bolden, who is a new girl on the block, is out here at PR. And the new person chair. Zareta Ingram, who is our health chair. Come on, let's give it up for Zareta. And Ms. Belinda Wooder, who is over our EXO. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it tonight. I also want to recognize those who have served with us, others who served with us in 2021. That is Angela Anderson of Education. She will not be serving with us here on as she'll be on the committee, committee, but not as the chair. Thank you, Angela for what you did in 2021. And also we would like to recognize Pastor James Yarbrough and First Lady Latoya Yarbrough, who were religious chair and who were our wind chair. Come on, let's give it up for our executive team members. And finally, you all, thank you for bearing with me, but I'd like to say or give a great big thank you to my husband, Membership chair. Oh, the membership chair. Mm -hmm. How you get Miss Lou Lambert? Mm -hmm. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> she can't find the better friend. She's just playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's just playing. Did I miss anybody else? I think we need to give somebody. We need to give it up for our president. Yeah. 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 And the Armed Forces Committee, uh, Mr. Gray. Y'all give it up for him. I need this one more See, we got a lot of work going on. <laughs> and I, I, I got to one at home. I got another man. Okay. All right. I want to, my family, y'all, I can't leave here without saying a big thank you to my husband, Jerome Pace. Y'all just met him. He's, he's over one of our committees. Come on, give it up for my husband. I got my children. I got two of them here. My children, grandbabies. My nephew over there. I say that because for years I've never said anything to my family. I kind of take it for granted that they have to deal with me from day to day. But I thank them for the sacrifice that they made because when you can't find nobody else, you all be able to find the family, right? And so they have stood up with me during this occasion. Thank you so much. I love y'all. And finally, my church members, the Great I Am Temple. They say big things come in small packages. And before y'all see it, they see it. And so I thank God for their sacrifice for supporting all that we do. Thank you so much. God bless. We're going to put it back into the hands of the MC to make the announcement and to give our benediction.
Amen. Amen. 